This information is coming directly from friends of mine that just got back from traveling to Germany and England. They had so many experiences that I wanted to share them with you because it is a actual real life story of what it's like to travel this year. So one of the good things that happened to them is that they didn't run into any crazy long lines. Now, this is certainly not the case. I think they lucked out in this regard. Everybody's experience is that the lines at airports are just complete chaos. They fortunately didn't have anything longer than an hour wait, but that was a light wait. So this is something that actually went well for them. Only having an hour wait was actually a good thing. All right, the next thing that they encountered was issues with their transitions. So like I said, they went from England to Germany and then back home to the US and they actually had some cancellations, which I'll talk about in a minute, but what ended up happening is they would have a layover or just changing planes in a different country. And when they went to try to get on the new plane, the people at the gate were saying, well, where's your passenger locator form or your health attestation or this, that, or the other thing. And they had no idea that things were required on the in-between countries that they were simply passing through on their way to their ultimate country. So that was also a problem, not being up to date on the latest requirements, not only for the countries they were going to, but the ones that they were traveling through. They had to sit there at the gate as the plane was in final call, trying to fill out all the forms they needed so they could get on the plane. It just added a ton of extra stress and worry and pain. <laughs> and they weren't alone. There were several other people trying to get on the plane as well that had the exact same problem. So this this is another problem that is happening right now is people who are not prepared for the transition countries, the ones that are simply passing through, also have their own set of requirements that you need to adhere to. All right, so speaking of airlines, the other problem that they had is cancellations. Now, they actually booked this trip pretty early on. I believe it was the beginning of this year, maybe early last year. and relatively quickly they had their primary flight canceled on them but it was in enough time that they were able to make other accommodations but the same thing happened while they were in germany it was the night before they were set to return home they were packing even and got an email that the flight the next day was canceled so then it was a huge scramble and nightmare to try to redo that flight in order to get home and not get stuck in germany and not have any hotel or any uh, accommodations or anything like that so this this is another thing that's happening. Airlines do not have their full contingent of pilots back and so a lot of flights are being canceled. Not that it's for sure going to happen to you, but you have to know that it's absolutely a possibility. It's no longer one of those rare situations. It is something that very well could happen and you need to know that and have some backup and contingency plans just in case. And I'll talk about that as soon as I'm done covering all of the things that can occur on your trip this year. Okay, the other thing that happened is their rental car. So they had rented a car, there was five of them, and they needed an SUV sized car in England in order to travel from London up to Manchester. And that's what they reserved and right up until the day they were supposed to get the car, the, uh, it was Hertz, actually didn't end up having the size available and they had to get a Toyota Yaris, which if you don't know cars, is a very tiny car for five people plus all of their luggage. And so this is also occurring where the rental cars, either you can't get them at all, uh, or prices are super inflated, or the cars are being changed at the last minute. So just know that that might be a possibility as well. If you need a car, just, Plan around that, know that, have contingencies for it. But if there's any way you can get away with not necessarily needing a car, it might be better to avoid that because that's one less thing that you're gonna have to stress about. So there were some other stresses with regard to their trip that I wanted to mention as well, but it wasn't necessarily particular to 2021. It was simply to do with how much they had planned in the time allotted. So they had things jam packed going from place to place to place. They ended up changing locations, I think it was four times. And so that sheer, volume of tourism all in one pack jammed schedule they were just exhausted and then they, what they found is that when something would go wrong it would have a domino effect on everything else after that and so it just 
created more stress on their vacation. So that is another thing you need to consider, especially this year. There's a likelihood of things happening and stress occurring. So maybe this is not the best year to jam pack full. I know we've been stranded for a year at home and you're dying to get out there, but maybe for this first uh, travel experience in 2021, spread it out a little bit, give yourself a little more room so that when things go wrong, it's not cascading and causing everything else to go wrong as well. So how do you protect against this? What should you do? Well, here are my tips for overcoming some of these very specific things that are happening this year. The first is not only checking the travel requirements when you book your trip, but staying on top of them all the way through, including while you're on your trip. So as I mentioned, one of the problems was knowing what the, the countries they were passing through, what those uh, travel requirements were. Part of that was because flights were canceled and they made a change at the last minute. Like they didn't know they were going through France, so they didn't know to prepare for it. But that is why you need to check your travel requirements all the way through, even while you're traveling. So before you head out for the next destination, make sure you're double checking what is required in that next place or the, any places, any countries you're traveling through to make sure you're always up to speed with the absolute latest information. And if necessary, call the airline. The airline should know what to be expected at the gates where they're servicing. Just double check all the way through from you book it all the way through your entire travel program until you get home. Make sure you're always checking and knowing exactly what's happening. The next thing to do is to buy travel insurance. And I know I am beating the dead horse about this one, but it is so important. Not only this year, it's always important, but this year it's really emphasizing why you need to have it. Travel insurance in this situation, when their flights got canceled, the travel insurance company would have helped them and or would have helped front the money so that they could get the flight home or the flight to wherever they needed to go. They would have been a huge help in this situation and they wouldn't have been on their own trying to struggle and scramble to find a new flight home. In addition to flight cancellations, delays, if your baggage is lost or stolen, if there's a medical emergency and you need, or a dental emergency and you need to be airlifted or you need medical care, this all is covered by travel insurance. And also many of the travel insurance companies nowadays, they should be having some COVID protections. None of them are going to cover every single COVID situation, but there should be some protections in case you get sick abroad or in case there's an outbreak and a shutdown and you need to get home. Travel insurance should be able to help you out with that. And we do have a company that we like because they have COVID protections and they also cover for things that aren't covered by other agencies, such as they call them adventure things, but they're not. It's things like hiking or kayaking and little things that you would imagine would be covered by insurance, but is actually not unless it's specifically written out in the policy. So this company that we recommend does cover those things and that's why we recommend them. I have a link to them below if you'd like to learn more. If you go to any of the other travel insurance companies, make sure you're reading the fine print and know not only what it covers, but you need to also know what it doesn't cover because there's a lot it doesn't cover and it might be something that you're planning to do. The next one is to prepare for the chaos at the airports. If you've seen any of my recent videos, you know this is another dead horse that I'm beating, but it is going to be chaos at the airport. Get there early, expect lines. If you have little ones traveling with you, especially make sure you've got maybe some extra snacks, maybe some activities to keep them occupied, or even if it's just you, something to keep you occupied. So if you are in line for an hour, two hours, three hours, there are some airports that are up to eight hours. Just be prepared. Just know that that's a possibility and, and prepare for that. Also, on your travel days, whether it is your first travel day, whether it's just an in-between travel day, coming home, whatever it is, do not plan any other activities the same day. So that way, if you are stuck in line for eight hours, God forbid, but if you are, you're not missing out on the activity you booked or rushing to try to get to that activity. You have that day is just a travel day so that you can relax, just worry about the travel piece and getting to where you need to go and that's it. There's no other stresses on top of that. On that note, remember returning home, you are likely going to need testing to get back home. If you're an American, you for sure need testing whether you have a vaccine or not. I'm certain that other countries have their own requirements for their citizens to return home. So make sure you're checking with your country Country. And in the case of Americans, that means on your vacation, you need to plan to have a test for your return home. Now, 
you don't want to wait until the last minute to find a place to go because yes, there are walk-in places, but lines are super long and you don't want to spend an entire vacation day again in line. So make sure you're planning for that ahead. You can even call your concierge to get an idea of where you can test, make appointments or reservations whenever possible. That way you have it planned and you know it's going to be covered. Also make sure you're doing it. So if it's a 72 hour window for the US, you have to be tested within 72 hours. Make sure you do it kind of as early as you can get away with that way there's plenty of time for your results to come back because some people are waiting too late and the results aren't returning in time and they get stranded and then that leads me to my final tip and that is to always have backup plans and contingencies just know things might get canceled things might change uh, you might miss flights something might happen so Things like having your travel insurance, things like ha making having your hard copies, and then be over organized. Have just try to think of every possible contingency and plan that you possibly can. And to help you with that, we've created a resource that helps to jog your memory so you don't forget anything and also has some of our tips and tricks for how to book things. We also have added the travel requirements section so that you know where to look and where to go, and then uh, a worksheet section. Worksheet sections so that you can fill all that information out. But even if you don't use that, the, write everything down in a notebook, try to imagine every piece and little small tiny bit of your vacation and plan for as much as that as possible. Build in redundancies, build in protections and backup plans because this is the year that things are gonna go wonky. And if you're, if you're planned out and you have a plan for everything and you're prepared and nothing goes wrong, fantastic. But at least if something goes wonky, you, it doesn't stress you out and freak you out. You have a plan and your vacation can still happen. All right, so if you are traveling this year, be sure to check out these videos. They should help you out with your planning and preparation. And like I said, we have that resource if you're interested in that uh, and the travel insurance if you're interested in that. And then if there are any destinations that you would like me to cover travel restrictions on, go ahead and comment below. Other than that, we will see you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.